What is up guys, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a lot of fun. I had a comment yesterday from one Miss Hannah Johnson, I wanna say, and I will just, I will just read it to you because it is great. It says, I would love to see you do a video showing makeup techniques you don't use and why. I know you've mentioned that you don't really do a traditional smoky eye, matte or high contrast lips, black liner, bronzer as contour. I'd love to see you do a bunch of all of those just for <laughs> and giggles. And I said, oh my God, this is a great idea. And then I had you guys vote on whether you wanted me to do that on my Instagram. 1,028 of you said yes and 23 of you don't like fun. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. But the thing that I did really like glom onto besides just the general fun of that concept was the end why. So I decided uh, today's gonna be another Habsies video. Maybe this one will be more effective in terms of contrast, but probably not useful than the one that I just did, the power of less makeup. A lot of you guys were like, this is so helpful. And a lot of you guys were like, I don't really see a difference between the two. And I was like, it's nuanced. So I think that the contrast in this case is hopefully, I'm totally winging it, uh, hopefully going to show like the temperature differences, the texture differences, things like that in contrast to how I would typically do my makeup and why I don't use those techniques because of things like, you know, I like making my eyes look bigger or I like making my skin look more supple. Several disclaimers here. One, there's a very good chance I get done and you guys are like, that looks fine. This is entirely personal. That's the other disclaimer is I am not saying this is how you should do your makeup or this is how you should not do your makeup. These are super, super personal, probably entirely like internalized hangups that I have about my own face. This isn't about like what's in style or uh, even the quality of the products. This is not a full face of products that I hate. I'm gonna be using products that I really, really like because I declutter things that I don't like. And then the final disclaimer is uh, probably the most obvious thing so far. I am highly caffeinated. <laughs> So um, there is a little function at the top of the video where you can slow it down and I wouldn't blame you at all. So anyway, I'm gonna move you all in and we're gonna be doing a habsies of all the makeup uh, techniques that I don't use and then the other side, which will be the and why. Let us commence. Can I just say how much I appreciate when someone finds my content so engaging that they're like, you know what, I've noticed a pattern. I'd like to call that pattern out and give you a gem of an idea. I really, really appreciate that. Like that is the highest compliment in the world to me. So thank y'all. Okay, one of the first things that I really stay away from is a full coverage matte foundation. So let's do that first. And actually it was kind of hard hunting through my collection for a full coverage matte foundation. I ended up just pulling the Gucci, the Gucci. This is supposed to be a natural finish, but uh, it's, pretty stinking full coverage on me and it's pretty stinking matte. And I also moistened a brand new booty blender for this. So let's booty blend. So the main reason that I typically stay away from something like this is because, especially applying it in this way, is well, A, if it's not a perfect match, it can really sell you out or it can like oxidize or anything like that. Maybe it's just, um, you know, being mentally scarred by the drugstore days when nothing really matched or everything oxidized and you ended up looking like a fool like hours later. <laughs> you know? It looked fine when you put it on kind of thing. We've come a long way since then. But the main thing is that it just makes more work for me. I kind of like over the years realized that drawing my whole face back on and trying to render reality was a lot more work than just leaving some of the reality there. <laughs> and that uh, I was willing to kind of put up with a less bulletproof face of makeup as a trade-off for not having to do so much work and also it looking better in real life. That's something that is hard to kind of communicate obviously on video because there's an entire style of makeup, several styles of makeup that look better on camera than real life makeup does. That's why it's, you know, people's entire career is to do on camera makeup. That has to do with a lot of things that I don't understand, but it's also why originally like YouTube makeup gets a bad rap. And that's because a lot of the techniques that were made very popular in the beginning of kind of the YouTube era of, of doing makeup, they looked pretty crazy in person. And so that's kind of why I've gravitated away from those things. But that is some frackles. And that is our first layer here. 
And like I said, I don't really have anything that's super, super full cove, but I'm going to kind of layer this up. The other issue is I just don't really love the finish. I feel like it does look kind of unnatural and I like to work with cream products and cream products, you have to be so delicate on top of a matte finish because what you're doing is essentially like, you know, changing the way that the light hits your face because, you know, the light is gonna reflect off of my face when I don't have any makeup on, but this is like absorbing light because it's matte. Oh, that's really nice khaki. This is the other reason I don't really do a beauty blender. It's just like, it's not very easy to control, but it looks good on some people, like on a lot of people. I don't know, it's just not, it's just not my thing. Definitely people with oily skin probably benefit more from a matte foundation. I don't want to exclude anybody. Wow, we're really on the power of makeup, aren't we? Wow. While this is still molten, I do want to go in with like a full coverage concealer. Did I pull one? Oh yeah. Not only is this full coverage, it's high contrast. It's a little too light for me. Actually, no, this is, I think my correct shade. I have two of these. Maybe I decluttered the lighter one. Either way, this is the Rare Beauty Concealer. It is still, pretty light and I'm going to go, you know what? I'm gonna do like YouTuber slash Kardashian slash uh, drag. You know what I mean? Like really, really try to accentuate the light. Kind of cake it on, you know? Boop, boop, boop. And the beauty of doing something like this, you know, for like an event or something, is it is bulletproof. And if you hit it with a really good setting spray, no matter how much you put on, I mean, you know, within reason, it's gonna stay put. Like those beauty tutorials of years bygone, they do work. Like Jaclyn Hill can teach you how to get a completely perfected face of makeup that looks like the light is catching you the right way at all times, but it's, it's gonna look surreal, you know, in person. So there's that. One of the biggest things that I don't do that I don't think really anybody does anymore, but I think it's funny, is bake. <laughs> so I pulled the hourglass powder here and I'm going, I'm gonna bake. It's one of the most uncomfortable techniques because it feels like what's happening. It feels like you're really, really, really drying out your under eyes and anywhere that you put this. And it's basically to, you know, put this flawless finish on your concealer, but it's not really for people with dry skin. It just isn't. And so it, it's gonna look bad. I should say that's another disclaimer I wanted to point out. I'm not gonna intentionally do a bad job here. It's not even, I'm not even like laying enough powder on for it to show. There we go. That's, that's what they do. They like do this number. And this might be the wrong powder. You know, I, I don't have like a really good baking powder because I don't really bake. Let's catch up on this side a little bit. Let's wipe, let's wipe this off. By the way, I didn't even do my skincare this morning. A, I was just so excited to film this, but B, pfft, I'm not wasting SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore 242 on a face of makeup that I'm going to wash off immediately afterwards, okay? I mean, this will come as no surprise. I'm just going to do like a really lightweight, kind of translucent situation on this side. Lisa Eldridge. So yeah, it's not like, oh, I'm so high and mighty. I just wanna have, my skin show through because I'm, I'm not like other girls. <laughs> it's just preference. I just like a little more glow and also it's just a lot easier to put on. <laughs> wow. Hopefully you can see the difference there. Now I'm gonna use my Thrive Concealer because it virtually disappears into the skin. And I could also do like a color corrector underneath there if I wanted to wear even less of it. It's like a very good trick for wearing less complexion product is to do a lot of color correction with something that's kind of more skincare texture and your face just like soaks it up and loves it. So yeah, I'm asking you, at least to this point, to train your eyes for nuance because I'm not just going to leave one whole side of my face blank. I should have given that disclaimer. Also, everything's gonna look more perfected under these lights. Like I have some natural light today. I keep looking at this fly that I can't, I don't know if it's dead or not. It's outside, but regardless. Yeah, so everything kind of always looks a little bit better than reality, but can we talk about that Lisa Eldridge Foundation? I talk about it enough. Okay, 
This was one of my favorite things that she pointed out was that I kind of always talk about how I can't contour with a bronzer shade. And this speaks to my soul because I am so passionate about like temperature of color, cool and warm tones in order to manipulate the light and the way that it hits your skin. I have watched many, many people, Tati being the most probably memorable, pull out a Scott Barnes palette with a bunch of very, very warm tans in it and contour with it and it looks phenomenal. Like she nails it. Again, this is not me telling you that you're doing your makeup wrong or that Tati's doing her makeup wrong or anything like that. This is just what works for me and I hope that you'll see why when I do it. I hope, I hope you will. Okay, I'm going to use the Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick. So, you know, you would think Soft Sculpt Shaping that what we're talking about here is a contour, but I was a bit disappointed when I found how warm it is. So let's use this to try and contour with. like full Tati style, right? Okay, and then something is subtle, subtly different as Biscuit from Westman Atelier could do the trick, right? But I like wanna really, really show the contrast here because this is almost a bronzer for me. Like that's how tolerant my skin is of cool tones. I'm gonna go with the Patrick Ta because it's probably like the grayest that I own because I am, I'm a believer, right? in a good contour, okay? I think that even if I'm wearing a very light face of makeup, contour really goes a long way because no matter how little complexion product you're putting on, if you're putting on complexion product all over one side of your face, you're gonna lose the natural, some degree of the natural contours of your face. So like all the same places, but just a different color. And I'd love to have done like a stick for you, but like I don't have a stick that's that color. All right, same brush. Screw it, you know? I guess I could use my booty blender too. That's another technique I never use. I need a little bit bigger of a brush to buff the amount of product that I put on. So I think it's, it's not so much that it's ineffective as it is that it's just more theatrical looking, right? It's a lot of contrast because my skin does have like, I don't know, I have a, like I've blanked a lot of stuff out. So it's kind of cool toned because of the powder and everything. And so that warmth is like really popping, which is not what you want. <laughs> it's not what I want. You know, when you want to create a believable shadow, pop is not what you want. And then over here, I take something a little bit bigger and just kind of buff everything out. Like I said, similar placement, not quite as much product. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? It's just, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to like exaggerate badness here. Like I'm really trying to get a good little contour going and everything, but just kind of using the wrong colors on purpose. Okay, the next thing that she pointed out was that I don't do a traditional smoky eye and it's because it closes my eye off. I have small eyes that are close set. So if you got these big old eyes, if you got some big old eyes, um, you know, you can really get away with doing most anything, right? But I'm kind of, I don't know, I guess I have a chip on my shoulder. I, I'm convinced that my eyes are, I'm, okay, I'll tell you the story. I went to a modeling invitational when I was 11 and I got rejected because I was about to hit puberty. And they're like, we don't know what's about to happen to your body and to your face. And they were right, everything went crazy. But at the time, the guy like sat me down and he was like, hi, you're an Italian and your eyes are hopelessly close together. You probably don't have a future in modeling. And I was like, okay. But if I'm gonna put in a lot of work on my eyes, I do want to make them look bigger. And a smoky eye doesn't really make my eyes look bigger. The other thing I don't use is like cool tone. Well, I don't use black eyeliner or black mascara typically. There are exceptions when I want my eyelashes to really, really pop. You know, and most mascaras only come in black. But the reason that I don't use black eyeliner is because there is a pretty good chance when you buy a black eyeliner that that particular black is going to be kind of a blue black. If it was guaranteed to be kind of a red black, I would be into it a lot more because it's not going to kind of like stand in stark contrast to the other coloring in my face. But a blue black has 
a small chance of making my eyes look demon red and also cool tones recede from the eye so they're going to on my skin tone contrast against the rest of my undertones and make my eyes look smaller so that's what we're going to do we're going to make my eyes look smaller ready it's a tutorial so i'm going to go with this tom ford palette because this does have a really great kind of like neutral gray beige kind of color, gray beige taupe, you know, it's just a good shimmery, spreadable, dark, dark, dark brown. In fact, ooh, <laughs> this is the wet to dry formula. Let's do it. Wetting a little brush here. And if this isn't dark enough, we can just keep going, you know? I mean, you guys watched me, that's pretty great actually. You guys watched me use Liza from the Lisa Eldridge Liquid Lurex eyeshadows. Like, it's not impossible, right, to make these kinds of things work on me, these shapes, but I can't just like raccoon eye myself the way that I used to do when I was like in middle school or high school, you know? Like finding out that that doesn't actually flatter me. Again, I'm not trying to do a bad job here, but when I washed this brush, it dried weird. So um, I'm gonna kind of chill on that guy. I just wanted to lay that color down thick and then we will dip a dry brush in there and build our shape. And I, th I thought about doing a liquid eyeliner today to show you guys like why I don't do liquid eyeliner. <laughs> I don't, I don't own one. I, I actually like hunted all the way through my stash and I think that I have decluttered all of them. They, they tend to be sent to me is the thing. And so, you know, I've never like, at least in recent years, bought one and I probably never will. But yeah, so I went with kind of the next best thing, especially because I don't think that a liquid eyeliner goes that well on a smoky eye because it's like the whole point of a smoky eye is that it's smoky and then like that graphic line I want to make it, I want to try to make it look good, you know? Ooh, you know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use mink. Mink will be a phenomenal smoky eye kind of like topper. Really just going in here, trying to blend as best I can here. A lot of people are probably like, that's not a typical smoky eye. Girl, I am working in techniques I never use. By definition, I'm not going to be that good at this, okay? Oh, wow. I'm going to go, this is very black swan. I'm going to go grab mink. This is one of those colors that like I feel like exceeds my skill set, you know? Like I start putting it on, I'm like, this is gonna be so pretty. And then like, I'm like, oh, I'm not good enough at makeup to use this. So let's do it. Oh, heck yeah, dude. That's serving like oil slick. And it does have a little bit of brown, like it actually is brown. I'm just putting it on top of something more gray. So it is gonna like help with the way that the eye perceives the eyelid. Cause like the crease is a little bit cooler than the lid. I'm gonna stick a little bit of that under, <laughs> at the risk of you just ruining something that's actually going semi okay. I'm going to pick some of that up on a brush here and just kind of focus that where I would want the warmth. And even on like a regular smoky eye, I feel like you do still do a little bit of an inner corner moment, right? Now I'm going to line my whole eye with black eyeliner and we're just gonna see how it goes. Sharpened my Victoria Beckham black cajol just for this. Wish me luck. <laughs> my inner corner. I feel like that would be like self-sabotage on a whole nother level. And there is a smudger on the end of this, but like that's a little bit imprecise even for me. So I'm going to blend with a little pencil brush here and just blow it out as much as I can, soften that line because it's going to look harsh no matter what. And I'm going to put mascara on the top and bottom lashes, which is something that I used to do. And like, it just it looks really, really strange on me. Really get it into those lashes, you know? Oh no, my camera quit on me guys. I'm so sorry. So basically what I did was I put mink up here. I darkened with some black and then I just, 
I just ran an eyeliner all the way around my eye. That's all I did. I just, and, and then I, I waterlined. So um, that's the result. It was probably very tedious to watch, so you, you got spared. So I'm not gonna do mascara yet because I haven't done any of my blush or anything and I don't want like the powder to stick to the, the liquid of the mascara, you know, kind of lose the whole impact. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do like what I would do as a smoky eye on this side, but it's, I mean, it's gonna be so chill. And I'm gonna do it in like a family of browns. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna be using this. <laughs> This is not the I'm gonna try and use all the same products challenge. I'm going to uh, use the Pat McGrath Divine Rose palette because it is the divinest for my skin. And it's not like, you know, I'm demurring from putting some color on my face. It's just about using the right tones, you know? Using a little bit of like the pearly shade up here in my brow bone to break that up and blend it. And then also one of the main things is I'm just keeping this, like this shape right here, light, like light in color, because as soon as it darkens, it like flattens everything out. And like my eyes look more sunken in and kind of all one dimension. That is that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a matte brown, work that onto the lid and in the crease, and I should be using a smaller brush for this. <laughs> Oops. Back into that beautiful lavender. I'm going to grab a smaller brush here that I don't have <laughs> black on. Try not to sabotage this whole project. Go with that lilac underneath my eye. Where have all the cowboys gone? And by cowboys, I mean my brushes. Where have all my cowboys gone? And you see how I keep the lid light? That is one of the main things. And I also make sure that like, even if I do put something on there, that it's something, I mean, I always, I'm gonna put something on there, but I'm saying like, even if it's like a dark color, I still want it to be kind of warm. So Pat, Pat understands me. And like this shade right here is a very good demonstration of a warm purple versus a cool purple. See, cool purple, warm purple, fascinating. Boom, I have an eye, you know? And I can put that shade up here too, bring it together because, and I know it looks crazy, but the whole idea being that that part of my eye also needs to come forward. So what I typically do is like, you know, pull any old kind of like powder that has, you know, it's translucent, but it'll kind of pick stuff up. And that's what I use to blend that or just an empty brush. But when you're working in tones that are more native to your skin, you don't have to be quite as precise. <laughs> so um, I am actually really sad to report that um, the Diamond Dust, the Crushed Diamond Highlighter from Aether, I asked Tyla and she said, they're gone forever. And I was like, no. <laughs> so I, you know, hold hold fast to your dreams, fam, because those are, those are gonzo. I won't be uh, featuring that one as much on my channel, even though it's my favorite inner corner highlight but I just don't want to torture people by using something that you can't use, like you can't get. I'm gonna take a little bit of a sparkly brown, work that, kind of layer it. So I'm just going to use the kind of brighter pearly shade that's in here as my inner corner highlight. Inner corner highlight is very, very vital to making my looks work, I feel like, and the brow bone highlight, because I need to use all the real estate that I have. You know, like use my temple <laughs> if I can kind of thing. And also making sure that when I kind of clean it up, it swoops a little bit more upwards. I need to like, you know, pull them apart a little in my own mind. Everybody's like, you're crazy tacky. They look fine. But do you see the difference there? I mean, Grant, obviously, Obviously, nope, no difference. That on this side, I've really like used shadow and light and temperature, and this has more like just flattened everything out. So the reason that I always use a powder as my eyeliner is just because it's softer. 
it makes a softer impact, but it's also more consistent. I feel like you get patchiness with a liner a lot more than you do with like a wet brush and a really good saturated eyeshadow. I also have so much more control. And I'm only doing it basically on the outer third of my lashes and thickening it towards that third and then taking it straight out instead of up. I mean, it kind of ends up looking up because of the way that, you know, my eye is shaped, but it really is just like a straight line from the outside of my eye right there. Oh my God, glitter is taking over my life. I don't know where it's coming from. I think it's because I wipe my nose and there's like glitter on my tissue. What is the difference in my blush? I don't really know. I don't think there's any blush technique that I don't use. So I'm just going to put blush on. I'm gonna actually do the Lawless blush because I like it very much. And it goes really well with this Divine Rose color palette. Actually, maybe it's not so much about the technique that I don't use as it is mixing kind of the wrong temperatures together. Maybe I'll do kind of the wrong temperatures together on this side. Like I'll do like the Milani Luminoso with like something peachy, you know what I mean? With, with the, the very kind of cool toned black on my eye. And you'll, you'll maybe see like why I don't typically do that. I also have it bronzed. I'm gonna just do a touch of bronzer over here. I'm gonna use the Well People. Such a beautiful texture. Take that under my chin a little. Me, 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 me. And at the risk of maybe disturbing the surface here, the actual finish, I am going to touch into Golden Hour from Melt and the blush lights, the cream blush lights. <sighs> It's just got this beautiful iridescence to it and it's a really, really sheer peach and it's warm in comparison to the Lawless. So, you know, this, I mean, it's a pretty darn good visual comparison, right? So this is gonna be, you know, more to kind of bridge the gap with my contour. And then this is going to be just that pop that makes it look like my cheeks are fuller. It does look a lot like Milani Luminoso actually, like a cream version of Milani Luminoso. Mm. So if I wanna get kind of a lifted appearance to my cheeks, like I'll manipulate where the blush is to where I want to look like it's coming at ya, you know? And on, on this side, um, I'm gonna do something that like, you know, I would never do, which is, you know, use a very, very shimmery blush all over my whole cheek because it looks surreal. I've actually heard a lot of people not really, really enjoy the M Cosmetics blushes for that reason. You know, it's because they are so shimmery. I, I'm definitely one of those people who doesn't love how shimmery they are. So that's Magic Hour. It is part of kind of a more coral collection. Baby Clementine is almost a bronzer. I'm gonna top that off with Venetian Rose because it's kind of like going in the wrong direction, right? It's going warm and then cool. And maybe you'll be able to see how bizarre it looks. You see that? doesn't just doesn't look right and it's all shimmery like it just looks confused plus both of those are are considerably uh clashing with that bronzer contour that i did it's just it's just mad at me and then the brow that i'm going to use today is actually the one from rare beauty absolutely no shade on on rare beauty but this is like one of those super super soft big fat tip, kind of waxy crayon kind of uh, brow. What the heck? Oh, that's right, there's a pomade on the other side. I forgot about that, that's neat. Yeah, and it basically gives me like instant marker brows. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's also a bit of a disagreement with like the tones, but I actually think that's like, a good color for me. This is uh, the rich taupe. It's a good kind of neutral brown, but it's just the fact that it lays so much product down all at once. <clears throat> yeah, if you're wondering how I'm doing, it's so hard to break that line up. It's so freaking pigmented. Yeah, and when it's spread out, maybe I just irritated the skin underneath actually, but when it's spread out, it's quite red. Yeah, and then I'm going to go over that with the, ugh, the mousse here. Thanks, I hate it. And over here, I'm gonna actually work with my Refi pencil. 
because I think it's a better shade for me. And I love how tiny, tiny that little tip is. It's great. Like Repurchaseville, this is going in Repurchaseville when I finish it. Like I do love a power brow. Eh, we'll, we'll go with the Kosas. I guess they're not really that different, but I enjoyed the application of this one more. I know that this is also discontinued, or at least this shade is. Uh, this is the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter in Lit. And I'm going to do a very YouTuber-y highlighting job here. There's a reason that I don't do that. And it's because it looks very strange in person and because I don't feel like it flattered the shape of my face. You know, that like C shape right there. I just don't feel like that's flattering. And the thing that I do with highlighter on, you know, a normal day is I will take something, most likely the Salt New York highlight here, and I kind of just place it right there where I have the darkest, deepest part of my socket. Like, not my socket, but you know, like a dark circle. And use it to kind of break up the way that the light hits there so I'm not applying like a whole bunch more concealer. It just kind of diffuses the appearance of that contrast, so. And I can do that kind of up here too. Make sure that all of my lines are really nice and blended because it's not super, super iridescent. Okay, now I'm going to spray this with some Fix Plus because I need this to melt together. After that, I will kind of probably selectively brighten a little bit with powder on this side. I haven't powdered at all on that side with the exception of the, you know, blushes and stuff. So I'm gonna throw mascara on. I'm going to do brown on this side and I'm gonna do black on this side and maybe you'll see the difference. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. Actually, I wanted to show this to you guys in real time because Beauty Pie just sent me this mascara. Actually, I sent it to me well, kind of a while ago, but like it is one of the winners to me of a non duty mascara formula. So again, I'm not like only focusing on things that I don't like. This is a really incredible mascara. It just happens to be black. It is a, it is a knockout mascara. What's it called? It's called the Uber Volume Boost Velvet Mascara. It's quite quite good. If you are not a tubing formula person and you do like a black mascara, holy crap, it's a good mascara. Because I get so impatient with mascaras that don't build. <laughs> I'm like, give me volume. Put the Wayne Goss waterproof on my lower lashes and I'm using the Beauty Pie, my upper. Boom. Like, are you kidding me? Lash Paradise who? <laughs> Some whack volume. It's amazing. Okay, and the last remaining thing is lips. I am quite known on my channel for avoiding a lot of different lip formulas. <laughs> it's probably like my most closed off topic because I don't like a high contrast lip on me because it undoes all the work that I've done to try and make my eyes the star of the show. <laughs> like my lips will take over so fast and I don't love a matte lip mainly because it tends to like flatten the way that the light hits my lips and it makes them look kind of like smaller and unhealthy, like, you know, dry. And I don't own a liquid lip color, like a full dry down one. At least I don't think I do anymore, but I just pulled one of these, the Bite Beauty Matte Lip Crayons. These are beautiful. They really are. Uh, and, and the colors are unbelievable. I don't know, like a year ago or so, they sent me all of them and they're incredible. I just never wear them because I just find that my face is just totally overwhelmed. Again, this is probably a completely personal problem. Oh, how funny. This has been sitting on my computer the whole time where it's warm and I can see that it's like softened the pencil. <laughs> Little life hack. Okay, uh, this is the Fit Glow Buff pencil. Let's overline my lips. I don't overline my lips because I get lip filler. I, I hope I don't need to. I like my lip shape. Although I don't typically line my 
Cupid's bow because it's super pointy and I don't really want to exaggerate that. I have a very pointy face. <laughs> I have a whole lot of angles here and so I kind of want to soften as much as I can. And so um, that's just why. It's not like I don't think anybody should. And then this is the shade Glacé. And it's quite cool and deep and beautiful, honestly. to be honest. It's kind of just a cream. It's very pretty though. So you can see, that's a, uh, oh my God. <laughs> look like Too Faced. Okay, and then, you know, my typical look is to take a very, very neutral lip liner, use that to kind of contour the outside of my lip where the line already exists. I don't like to pull it out really far either because I feel like it kind of takes away from the plump look. And then I'll just take something like this, the Illamasqua Hydra Lip Tint Picnic Crash, Picnic Plum. And it's going to kind of be a similar color, but in just a balm format, you know? If you're weirded out that there's a blue stripe on my lip, it's because this like mixes as it goes. Harder than it looks <laughs> putting on a half and half lip. So yeah, let me touch up just a little bit here. I'll add a little bit of powder right under my eye. Actually, a lot of y'all have been asking if I still use this, my, my Lily Lolo Mineral Concealer. Yeah, this is such a great like last step to, especially when you haven't put on a lot of complexion product, to go in and add total opacity to some of the sort of distracting parts of your face that kind of take away from all the other work that you've done. Do you see what I mean? It's like my eye was a little bit distracted by the darkness right there in my inner corner and also like right underneath my nose. And here where I have a little bit of scarring, it kills it. <laughs> it kills it with fire. I'm going to tell the church. This is poorly blended. It is, but that's okay. It's okay. My lips feel weird but that's okay too. <laughs> this was even more fun than I thought it was going to be, guys. Um, this is a more mild look, I guess you would say, because it's all slightly closer to my skin tone. Brown instead of black. I'm playing with textures in a way that I like to control them. You know, I like to have kind of mattification where I don't want the eye to be drawn to and uh, a little bit more juiciness where I want it. Like I want my cheeks to look really supple. I want my lips to look really supple kind of thing. And the eye shape, I'm kind of, oh, I've worked years on this shape uh, to, to basically, you know, make them look farther apart and, and larger. I guess that's kind of the goal of like most of my makeup looks is to just make my eyes look bigger and the rest of it sort of responds to that. And so then you end up with like, oh my God, when I cover up this side of my face, like you see how insane that looks. Like, it looks like stage makeup because of the contrast. And the contrast is because there is such a warm contour and such cool powder. So you would want this to kind of pop forward and this to recede and they're doing the opposite and they're just fighting and it really, really distracts your eye. And then the eye look is very, very like flattened out. I have kind of like shot myself in the foot in two ways. One, like I said, kind of flattening everything out and making it look like smaller, but also the fact that it's like a cool tone all the way around my eyes, you just sort of lose everything that I had going for me to begin with. Now, if I did this with like a really pretty like green gold, it could work. I could play with like the neutrality of that and pull the, the light and everything out of it, but it's not that the placement is wrong, it's that the colors are wrong. The overlined lip, as you can see, even though I have like a black swan eye, it completely takes over. I would not kick this lip color out of bed though. It's a really, really pretty color. <laughs> So uh, yeah, and then, you know, I don't really think that there's that much difference in the eyebrows or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to use a product that I, I thought might be a little bit harder for me to use. But, uh, but yeah, also this is kind of uncomfortable having my lips like, I, I didn't realize that there would be a sensation that I would be able to notice that I'm wearing lip color outside of my lips but I feel it. It's a very, that's very strange. But yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that like if I wore this to an event, I'd be embarrassed or anything, but I just don't think that it's working my assets to the best of their abilities, especially for the amount of work that went into it. So yeah, 
I want to thank Hannah Johnson for having this brilliant idea. This was so freaking much fun. And I really want to see like if there are any other creators watching this. If you liked this idea, I would love to see some other people do it because it is a scream, isn't it? It's fun. Black Swan it up. If you guys found this fun slash valuable, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me and for commenting and engaging with my content because I get my best ideas from you. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one.